Today we will be talking about uh, regular grammars and the relation between regular grammars and finite automata. So we defined a regular grammar last time. How did we define a regular grammar last time? So a regular grammar is one special case of linear grammars, right? So a regular grammar is a special case of a linear grammar Okay, what kind of linear grammar is regular? regular? So in order for a linear grammar to be, what's a linear grammar? So a linear grammar is just, you know, like linear in algebra, a linear uh, expression or equation has only one variable. So on the right hand side you only have one variable so this is a regular this is a linear grammar now a, a linear grammar can be left linear or right linear or right linear <coughs> so if a grammar is left linear or right linear we call it a regular grammar okay so it has to be, you know, uh, consistently left linear or consistently right linear. So is this right linear or left linear? Well, this is right linear. So look at the variable. So where, the va where is the variable? Is it on the right or on the left? Yeah, the variable is on the right. So this is right linear. Uh, a left linear grammar would look like this. B, A. And then... B is B, B, or B. Is this equivalent to this? Are they equivalent? No, they are not equivalent. Yeah, but uh, you know, for a, uh, you can find the. Uh, so it's uh, you, you know the the point is that. The, if, if you have a linear, a right linear grammar, the corresponding left linear grammar is not necessarily equivalent. Because this, will, this is going to generate Bs followed by an A, an arbitrary number of Bs followed by an A. This is going to generate an A followed by an arbitrary number of Bs. So these two grammars are not equivalent. But anyway, this is not the point here. The point is understanding the relation between regular grammars and finite automata. So we said last time that a regular grammar is another way of representing regular languages. And we will show this today uh, by showing how to convert a regular grammar into a finite automaton. Okay, so now this, uh, this regular grammar, if we examine this, how will it generate strings? So we have an S then uh, the only substitution for an S is AB. So we only have one choice, AB. Then for the B, we can generate as many Bs as we want. So we can keep substituting B, 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 B. So we generate as many Bs as we want. Then uh, when we are done, we'll have, we we'll substitute a B. So we'll have to have at least a single, uh, at least one B, right? Mm -hmm. So what would be a regular expression for this? A? a B, star. B star? No, that's not true. It's not A, B star. Why? Uh, there has to be at least one B. So in fact, it's a B plus, not a B star. Or it's a b b star remember the b plus notation so b plus is equivalent to b followed by b star okay so this is a b plus now in order to construct an uh, an nfa for this you know we can think of the 
you know, each variable or non-terminal, what do you think that will correspond to in a finite automaton? What will a variable in a grammar correspond to in a finite automaton? A state. A state, yeah. It will correspond to a state. <coughs> and in fact, the start variable corresponds to what? The start state. So then what corresponds to the final state? You know, wha what, what in grammars corresponds to the final, to a final state? What ends the derivation? So in a, in a finite automaton, when you are processing a string, the processing ends with, if, it's, if it belongs to the language, the processing ends in a final state or an accept state. Now, in a grammar derivation, when you do a derivation, if it's a successful derivation, if the string belongs to the language, what do you end up with? Mm. Hmm? Terminals. terminals, yeah. So you end up with terminals. Okay, so now we can try, you know, S. <coughs> we can, you know, define a state S as a start state. And then say, okay, the A will take us to another state b okay then what then this b what does this transition say or this rule hmm? b takes us to a b so the a the a takes us from s to b a B, if we are in a B, a B takes us to B. And where does this B take us? So it's a, there is a terminal. Then if we get this B, we go to an accept state. Yeah. So this B is going to take us to an accept state or a final state. We can call it. Okay, so basically, you look each uh, each variable, each grammatical variable is a state, and each transition, uh, each uh, production is a transition. But uh, and then <coughs> you know terminals take you to a final state. But what if you have something like, what if we change it to this, AA? A. Then we'll have the S. Then can we do this, AA, B? Yeah, we cannot do AA because it's the label for a transition in a finite automaton should be a single uh, symbol, not multiple symbols, but again, you know, we can just introduce other states. So we can just make it A takes us to some other state. We can, uh, you know, give it whatever name, uh, you know, B, uh, B1, and then <coughs> the other A takes us to B or B2. Um, and then the B keeps you in this state. And a B will take you to a final state or an accept state. Okay, so yeah. For the first one, would, would it be wrong if you put the loop in beyond the F? The loop beyond the F? Okay, so here, okay, so this is a good question. So here we're not trying to, in this particular example, if you put the loop here or here, it's going to be the same. But we're not, trying to, we're not trying to solve one example. We're trying to come up with a systematic procedure for converting a regular grammar into a finite automaton. So we're trying to come up with something systematic that we can do systematically and that, that we can apply to any, uh, any example, any case. 
Okay, so it's always, you know, when, when we study systematic procedures, it's always tempting to try to make simplifications or come up with equivalent uh, solutions for one example. But let's try to resist this temptation and stick to the systematic procedure because it's mu much more important to come up with a systematic way of converting. Okay, so it's like if you remember our, com our procedure for converting regular expressions to finite automata, uh, that procedure uh, generates lots of redundant, may generate lots of redundant epsilons. But that's because it's a systematic procedure. Now, uh, uh, you know, eliminating redundancies can be uh, interesting if you know how to do that in general. But, you know, optimizing one example is not, uh, is not that interesting. What, 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 what's really interesting is, uh, what would be interesting is trying to come up with a systematic way of, uh, you know, eliminating redundancies or generating more um, uh, simpler solutions. Anyway, so now what's the general procedure? The, the general procedure is, if you have a variable, <coughs> variable vi with a1, a2, a3 through a n vj, then the equivalent state is, is going to be vi a1 and then v1 a2 takes you to v2 all the way to and uh, at the end uh, a n takes you to what vj this is the general procedure. Does this cover all possible productions in a, does it cover all possible productions in a regular grammar? No, every production in a regular grammar is either of this form or what form? If it's right linear, of course, we're assuming that it's right linear. What's the other form for a production in a right linear grammar? So look at this. How many, how many kinds of productions do we have? So we have this and this. They are like what we have here. And then we have a production with only terminals. So we have if vi goes to a1, a2, a3 through a m, then this is going to be equivalent to the transition. Vi goes to through A1, goes to V1. And <coughs> this A2 takes you to uh, V2. And then finally, Am takes you to what? To a final state that you introduce, yeah. You introduce a final state. Okay, so in fact, this is uh, relatively easy. We'll lo we'll look into a couple more examples. Okay, so one more example is this. Uh, v0 goes to a v1 and v1 goes to a b v0 or b. Okay. So now, in fact, to apply this procedure to it, we'll get this. V0 is the start variable, so we have V0. 
Then an A takes us to V1. Then if we are in, in, in V1, an AB takes us to V0. So how do we do this? We need to introduce what? So can we do this? No, we cannot do this. You cannot have a, a string as a label. Okay, so you have to introduce intermediate states like this. So when you have these, all of these variables, so you'll have to introduce an intermediate state for each variable. So in this case, uh, you know, the A takes you to some state uh, that you give any a name to, so you can call it V2. And then the B takes you to V0. What else? Yeah. So this takes you back to V0. And then uh, the B takes you to a final to a final state. Okay, so now let's convince ourselves that you know these are equivalent. So what if we do this derivation V0? I must do A V1. Then when I'm in V1, I can do A B A B V0. Right? And then v V0, I can either finish with a B or I can go back to A V1. A V1. And then in A V1, I can do a, a B V0. Then I can do in V0. Uh, I, I have to do, uh, sorry, uh, in, uh, yeah, in V1 I can do A, B, V0, and V0 I must do A, V1. And V1 I can finish with B. Okay. So what's, can you come up with a regular expression for this? What repeats? So there is something that repeats. What's the substring that can be repeated here? What's the substring that can be repeated? Like here, you have A, A, B, A, A, B, A, B. So what's the substring that you can repeat as many times as you want? <coughs> A, A, B? Uh, no, you cannot. So it's like, are you saying it's A, A, B? You can repeat it as many times as you want. I, uh, no, I don't see this. Uh, it's not, I, th I think it's this. A, B, A. A, B, A is what you can repeat. So, you can think of it, if you look at this finite automaton, in order to get uh, accepted, this A, you must have this A, and you must have this B. So having an A in the beginning and a B at the end is a must, but between them, what can you repeat? Between the A and the B, you can repeat A, B, a. So you must have an A, you, you must start with an A, and you must end with a B, and in between them, once you get here, you can repeat A, B, A. Okay, does anyone disagree? Right? So. Clearly, you must start with an A, and you must end with a B. And in between, you can go, uh, you can traverse this cycle, 
starting here. So this is where the cycle starts and this is where it ends. So A, B, A, A, B, A. Okay, now does this, yeah, so we're doing all of this to just convince you that the, you know, the, uh, the finite automaton that we constructed is equivalent to the regular grammar. Uh, uh, is anyone, does anyone have any doubt about this? Okay. One, uh, one more example. Okay, so what's this language? What's this language? What's that? Say that again. Sigma star? So this is sigma star, the x. Oh. The x alone is sigma star. But this is AB sigma star. So this is AB sigma star. This is the sigma star. Okay. Now, an equivalent finite automaton is S, start state, then the A takes me to a state, let's call it X1, and then the B takes me to X2, and then in X2, uh, or you can, I can call it X, and then A or B keeps me in X and then an epsilon takes me to a final state. Okay, so someone may say, okay, I can make the X a final state. Okay, uh, yes, that, that's a val that would be a valid simplification, but let's stick to the systematic procedure. <coughs> here, you know, our focus here is to to learn a systematic procedure and uh, use it systematically. Okay, so this just generates those strings that start with A, B, and then you can put anything. Anyone has any doubts about this? Okay, so let's do the conversion in the other direction. What if we have a finite automaton and we would like to convert it into a grammar? What if we have this uh, finite automaton? Q0, A, Q1, A, Q2, B, A, Q, F. Okay. So, what's this language? So, this language is, you have A, A, then B star, right? Mm -hmm. Then A. Now, how, how would we convert this into a grammar? Well, you know, Q0 is the start variable. So, Q0, the start state, is going to become the start variable. Then, 
We have a transition from Q0 to Q1. This corresponds to what? A transition corresponds to a production or a rule. So you have a transition from Q0 with an A to Q1. Right? So the A takes you to AQ1. And then I have a transition Q1 on an A to Q2. It's very straightforward. And then on a Q2, I have a transition on a B to Q2. And Q2 on an A takes me to Q sub F. And then what? What should I do? So whenever I have a finite, a final state, that corresponds to an epsilon transition. Okay, so whenever, uh, you know, there is a, you can substitute nothing for the final state. So in fact, uh, well, we can get rid of this, in fact. So when you have, oh, uh, when you have this, when you have a, a transition like this, so you just have VI, A1, A2, A3 through AN, VJ. And when you have a final state, you just do F goes to epsilon. That's all, uh, all what you need. Okay, so <coughs> is everyone convinced that this grammar is equivalent to this? Of course, this is not the only grammar. Uh, you know, this is not the only grammar that, you know, that can represent this finite automaton, right? Yeah, so if, uh, sorry, it, uh, in fact, we're, we're not following this rule. We're following the rule of, uh, you know, every, uh, well, we, we will look at one transition at a time. So for a regular transition like this, VI goes to VJ, we are doing, you know, one at a time. So we are saying, okay, VI, A, VJ. So, yeah, so a, fi uh, a, s a state transition like this corresponds to VI goes to A, VJ. And a final state corresponds to F goes to epsilon. Okay, so, yeah, so it's very, very straightforward. So let's look into a language that we know, one of the languages that we used as examples for finite automata. Uh, okay. Any questions before we move to the next example? Okay. What about... Uh, this L W such that W contains uh, A B A. So in this case, we will have A B A, and okay, let's give them names. A, B, A. So this is Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3. And then what? This is a, and then this is A, B. And this is A, B. Do you agree? So it contains uh, A, B, A as a substring, of course, or the substring. Okay, so systematically convert this into a regular grammar. We'll have Q0 
on an A goes to Q1, Q0 on an A also goes to Q0, Q0 on, an, on a B goes to Q0. So on an A it goes to Q1 or it goes to Q0. So these are the transitions for Q0. For Q1, for Q1, on a B, we, oh, I, I had, a, yeah, this should be Q2, <laughs> not Q1. On a B, it goes to Q2, and Q2 on a, what? On an A goes to Q3, and Q3 on an A goes to Q3, and Q3 on an A, on a B goes to Q3, and finally Q3 goes to epsilon. So in order to convince ourselves that, let's see how we derive. So this is a systematically generated grammar that's equivalent to this finite automaton. If we start with Q0, or no, derivation now. Q0, I can substitute AQ1 or AQ0. <coughs> So basically when I substitute something that keeps me in Q0, it's whatever comes before that string. Uh, so I can have uh, AQ1, or sorry, AQ0 first. And then for A0, I can substitute AQ, uh, uh, yeah, so this is AQ0, and in Q0 I can substitute AQ1. Now I'm making progress. When I go to Q1, I'm making progress. For Q1, if I'm in Q1, there is only one valid uh, substitution for, uh, for a correct derivation. So I have to have a B. And that will take me to Q2. And then when I'm in Q2, there is only one substitution, which is an A. That will take me to Q3. But once I'm in Q3, I can either add as many A's and B's as I want and stay in Q3, or I can end with an epsilon. So in Q3, uh, in Q3, I can add as many A's and B's as I want and stay in Q3, or I can end with an epsilon. So now, this is my string. So A, B, A, and I just did one A in the beginning before the A, B, A. So are you convinced that these are equivalent? Yes.